Hey guys, so back in 2014, Vermont passed a GMO labeling law. This went into effect in July of 2016. As you may or may not know, I was not a huge fan of this. Um, genetically modified foods like soy and canola are perfectly safe, and I don't really see the point in labeling them. GM soy and regular soy, they are essentially no different. Genetic modification isn't adding anything to the soy right, which I think is what labeling implies. It implies that there is something different about genetically modified soy or canola or whatever, um, something that consumers need to be made aware of. Labeling something as containing genetically modified ingredients or being genetically modified is not the same as like labeling a product as containing allergens, right? The latter makes total sense because obviously if someone is allergic to milk or egg or something and they eat something with milk or egg in it, they could be harmed. So it makes sense that they have an easy way to see on the package, oh, this has something in it that I shouldn't eat. Cool. And speaking of allergens, GM foods actually go through rigorous testing to make sure that they're not introducing any allergens to consumers. A good example of this is what happened about 20 years ago when some scientists were trying to make a kind of improved soybean by genetically modifying it with genes from Brazil nuts. Unfortunately, it also passed along <laughs> Very professional on this channel. Uh, unfortunately, it also passed along the protein that can be deadly to people who are allergic to Brazil nuts. So this was discovered during development. The product was halted, canceled essentially. Uh, it never went to market and no one ever got hurt. The good news is that this shows we have tests for these allergens that work and we should use them to make intelligent decisions about the commercialization of new foods. All genetically engineered foods and plants should undergo extensive testing before they are marketed. So I don't see the point in labeling something as GMO. And I feared that doing so would like stoke paranoia in the public among like normal quote unquote people and that they may end up choosing organic non-GMO foods instead, because you know, why would you label something unless it's harmful? Similar to, I believe one survey, might've been a couple that showed that people who are exposed to organic propaganda, they may buy less produce because they can't afford organic. And so they just don't buy any produce at all because they're so afraid of the conventional produce being toxic and just laden with chemicals. But it seems that my fear was unfounded, which is just a fancy way of saying that I was wrong. Uh, like I said, it's been two years since Vermont's labeling law went into effect. And actually this changed labeling nationally because a lot of companies, like what would be the point in just having separate packaging from Vermont? <laughs> you know, why not just change the packaging nationally for everyone? But anyway, uh, this scenario in Vermont, it gave researchers a really good opportunity to to test this theory that labeling would lead to more anti-GMO sentiment, which I mean, both sides thought, right? <laughs> the pro-GMO and anti-GMO, of course, this is what they were banking on, that if they can get these laws into place, that more people would choose organic non-GMO. Mandatory labels can improve attitudes toward genetically engineered food. Whoops. <laughs> so not only, not only is genetic modification labeling in Vermont not correlated with an increase in anti-GMO sentiment, but it's actually correlated with the opposite. Less people are afraid of GMOs. This national study cannot identify why this change occurred, but the findings are consistent with previous research suggesting that labels give consumers a sense of control, which has been shown to be related to risk perception. Whether labels improve a sense of control, improve trust, or operate by some other psychological mechanism is a question we leave to future research. And so reading this and reading, there's an article on it, uh, I think The Atlantic, um, it makes a lot of sense, I think. And there was a, I can't, I couldn't find it. I tried to look for it again, but there was a, a survey maybe a couple years ago on GM sentiment. And while there were people who were no, no GMOs, organic only, and there were people who were like, no, GMOs are great. Like most people didn't care. They didn't have an opinion one way or the other, either because they literally did not care, or maybe they were just ignorant. They didn't know, you know, the, the right side to be on, quote unquote. So I don't think most people really care. This is speculation on my part, but I don't think most people really care about genetically modified foods. And probably because of that, they don't see why someone would be against labeling. We're mostly talking about people who don't really know the 
the debate going on with genetically modified foods, they may not even know what GMO means. What is a GMO? I don't know. I know it's like some corn bad stuff, right? <laughs> I know it's bad, but to be completely honest with you, I have no idea. So they don't know the nuance of the situation. They don't know why someone would be against labeling. So I think to the average person, it probably looks really weird, right? Like labeling can only be a good thing. It's only giving you more information. Why would you be against that? Especially when the the largest players, so to speak, the, the most vocal people who are against labeling are companies, are major corporations who are selling you food, who would have to actually deal with these laws, that seems pretty shifty. It seems like maybe these companies wanna hide something. Maybe GMOs aren't safe. So by seeing that label, I think it's just reassuring. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Like, thank you for being honest. Thank you for being open and transparent. And let's be real. Like, I don't think anyone's even going to be paying attention, right? It's like the allergen label. Unless you have allergies, um, unless you're allergic to milk or egg or peanut or something, or if you're vegan, I mean, I use the allergen label all the time when looking at food. It's great. Um, otherwise, you probably you probably don't even notice that it's there at this point. Again, total speculation on my part, as I quoted, um, you know, there needs to be more research. I don't know if there needs to be, but it would be interesting to see uh, why people feel more comfortable, I guess, with labeling versus not labeling of genetically modified ingredients. So I'm happy, obviously. I mean, this is a really good thing to be wrong about, right? I still hate the idea of labeling. It's still meaningless, but I would never campaign against something just on principle alone. I think that's kind of ridiculous. You know, the current research shows and whether or not we can actually extrapolate this to like the entire nation, you know, time will tell, but it really seems like labeling does not increase fear in GMOs. In fact, it may have the opposite effect and that's all that matters. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Comments and questions down below. If you want to subscribe, that's super cool. If you want to support the channel, that's super cool too. Patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. My mouth gets so sweaty at the end. I don't, it's so sweaty. <laughs> My mouth gets so spitty at the end of videos. I swear it's mostly fine during the rest. Or maybe I just really notice it during the outro, but man, bleh, it's gross. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, this might not be the best place to record. Oh, crap.